Hey scholars, this is a video to go along with our final exam guide. So make sure you are looking at your final exam guide as I'm going through this, as you're listening to this. So um, for our class, the way I structure the final exam is that you'll take it at the, basically at the end of final exam week. So final exam week is uh, this upcoming week. Today is Saturday, so final exam week is, uh, I think it's technically like Sunday through Friday or something like that. But anyways, the last day of finals is Friday. So for our class, what I do is I create the online exam and it'll open up Friday morning and then it closes Saturday night. Um, I've done it this way. I've, I've done final exams for online classes this way for a while. Most most of my students like that. They, they, they prefer that, they appreciate that because that way they they know that for our class, they're not, they don't have a, it's, it's one less exam they have to take during the week. Because sometimes, as I'm sure many of you can relate to, you'll have multiple exams on the same day. You'll have like two or three final exams on the same day. And that's overwhelming. <clears throat> and definitely, in my opinion, should not be the case. Anyhow, so um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about taking an exam on Canvas because I already did that for a midterm. So this exam will be very similar to the midterm exam in terms of the logistics of how you take the exam, accessing the exam through Canvas. You've already, you've already taken an exam in our class through Canvas. So I'm, I'm going to reiterate some things that are very important and, um, and then touch on the, the logistics that are unique to this final exam. So like I said, opens Friday morning, closes Saturday night, 11.59 PM, Saturday, uh, December 18th. You get two hours. The final exam window is, for most classes is an hour and 15 minutes. I just round that up to two hours, which is more than enough time to take this final exam. So you have to begin the exam or in order to get your full two hours, you'll have to begin the exam by 10 PM on Saturday, the 18th. Um, to my knowledge, the, 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 the cutoff time, I mean, the, not to my knowledge, but the cutoff time is 11 59 PM Saturday night. And so because that's a cutoff time, that's when the exam closes. To my understanding, if you're taking the exam during the cutoff time, let's say it's 11.58, right? And you're not finished with the exam. So I have several questions, it's 11.59. Um, so I have several questions. As soon as, the, as soon as it's midnight, as soon as the clock strikes 12, so to speak, I believe it, it kicks you off of the exam, saves all your work so you don't lose your work. It's not like all the answers that you've already submitted or are not counted. It would take all your existing work, whatever answers that you've, whatever questions you've answered so far, they would take that and record that as your final answers. And then, um, and then you're not able to proceed. That's how I understand. That's the way that I understand it happens, right? So sort of, sort of that, uh, as I call it, the Cinderella effect, right? Once the clock strikes midnight, um, everything changes. So, I highly encourage you to begin the exam far prior to 10 p.m. It probably won't take you a full two hours. Uh, it takes everyone a different time. There are some short answer questions. So there's multiple choice, true, false, uh, and um, yes, short answer questions. I thought there were. I'll just double check it. Anyhow. Uh, so that's that. Please plan accordingly. Please, please plan accordingly to ensure that you can take the exam in, in the most ideal setting. So I already talked about this before. I'll briefly review. I'm going to talk about preparation and then of course, academic integrity. So make sure before you, before you click the button to begin the exam, I think it, I think the button is start attempt or begin quiz or something like that. I forget. Uh, just as a, as a side note, Canvas refers to exams as a quiz. So you'll, it'll say like begin quiz, start attempt, start quiz, something like that. It's changed over the years. But anyhow, before you click that button, make sure you have everything you think you'll need, everything that you'll need during that exam time. So all your notes, your textbook, battery charger, if you're using a laptop, water, snacks, whatever, like you think through everything. It's not like you can't stop, right? I mean, the, the, the clock keeps going, but I would say, um, you know, just, just think through everything, even, even things like, uh, make sure your, 
make sure your screensaver, you know, the, 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 if you go to settings, adjust the time for when your computer goes to sleep. If, if let's say your monitor goes off after five minutes of idle time, you know, change that to a longer amount of time, just in case, just in case there's periods of time where, you know, you might not be, let's say you see the question and you're working on your answer and then several minutes go by. You don't want, you don't want the screen to minimize or the screen to go to sleep. Anyhow, just think through all those things, right? It's an online class. So um, think, think commonsensically, so to speak. Make sure your computer is reliable, that you have a stable internet connection and then a, and a, and a location that promotes an ideal distraction free learning environment. I would say, you know, hey, let's say you live at home, you have roommates, you have siblings that, uh, cousins or whatever, maybe it's, maybe it's really loud and noisy in your house most of the time, especially if you're taking online classes, I would say, don't take it in those settings, figure out a different location, go to your neighbor's house, go to a family member's house, plan accordingly, plan strategically. You don't want to be taking this exam and then something goes wrong. Let's say little, you know, little Johnny runs and knocks your computer over, uh, uh, unplugs the computer or something happens, right? Something happens because of something like you're not in the best location. Um, so plan strategically. You're strongly encouraged to take this exam from a laptop or desktop. Uh, you're strongly advised not to take it from a mobile device, like your mobile phone or a tablet device. I, as I mentioned in other videos, the other video, midterm exam video, uh, I've had students over the years taking online exams who they, they tell me they ran into a problem or they got kicked out or something went wrong. And in those situations, most of the time they're using a cell phone cell phone or a tablet or something like that. Um, so make sure you don't do that. That's my advice to you. Um, the way I recommend studying, I have, I have a list of all the sections from our textbook that you should study. What I recommend in the past is for each section, for each chapter that's on there, I, you know, not all chapters are covered. Of course, it's not a cumulative test. So you're only, only the chapters that are listed on this exam guide is what's going to be on there. But I first recommend that you re re review the entire chapter, review the entire chapter first, and then go in and sort of cherry pick those specific sections that I note on the exam guide. And then from there, you can create an exam guide the way I do it, type it. I don't just summarize the entire book. I don't summarize those sections, but I put things into my own words. I write out definitions. I write out key terms. I explain things. I write things in a way like sort of free flow consciousness. I don't, I'm not really concerned about spelling or grammar, syntax, anything like that. I'm just more so concerned about do I understand this material as I'm reading it in the textbook? How do, like, how do I understand it? How could I explain to someone else? What can I connect it to in my personal life or in films or TV shows or in sports or in relationships, right? I'm trying to make sense of the material such that when I get those questions on the exam, I have a better, a higher likelihood of getting the answer correct. Because if I understand it, then I see it in a question. Now I can answer it better. Of course, it's open book, open note, open internet. So um, you're definitely advised and encouraged to, to be really strategic with how you organize your, your notes in your book, you know, have, have, a, a post-it notes, have, have something, have, have some sort of system where it's, where everything's labeled, all the different sections and chapters are labeled in the textbook. So that way, when you're actually taking the exam, you're not having to thumb through the back of the book or the references or the index or table of contents, you have it all organized, ready to go there. And of course, if you have a really detailed final exam outline or st like study guide outline that you've created, if, if that's really detailed, it's, that's, that's probably going to be your main source of where you get your answers from. And of course, looking at all your notes from the, the, um, all the lectures that, that we had now, obviously not some of the chapters that are listed on the exam guide. I didn't post lectures for those, but you know, you still obviously were required to read those chapters. So for those, I take that, I take into consider the, in other words, the, the chapters that are listed where I didn't provide a PowerPoint lecture and video on Canvas for those chapters, I, I obviously take that into consideration with the types of questions that I construct and the kinds of questions that you're testing on. And so there's no PowerPoints that you can study from that. But for the other chapters where we do have PowerPoints, I definitely recommend that you review all your notes from those PowerPoint lectures, PowerPoint videos. Um, 
and and then of course as well review the or do the study for the sections that are listed on the study guide. So that's that in terms of um, studying. Yeah. Okay. Just to re just a, as a a reiteration or re a very important reminder of academic integrity. So I included some more information about our university's policy on academic integrity. I included more information on this actual set on this actual study guide just just so you can have a visual of what that looks like. For those of you who haven't reviewed our university's academic dishonesty policy, which is UPS, it's University Policy Statement 300.021. That's University Policy Statement 300.021. That's our university's academic dishonesty policy. It's very important that you're familiar with that. Now, now I, I, I iterate, I, um, I, I'm reiterating these things because of how important academic integrity is not just for our class in this exam, but in general, it's important that you know about it. A lot of students aren't aware of it. I didn't really understand it that well when I was a college student. I didn't really have professors who went into detail. Nevertheless, I am going into detail for you. It's important that you understand how this works. Most universities, pretty much all universities, public, private, community colleges, all kinds of public learning institutions, private learning institutions, they have a very firm stance on academic integrity. So. Like I said, I'm not trying to scare you, but it's important for you to be aware, to be advised, to be informed, to be educated. So I have the link. So, you know, towards the middle of that first page of our final exam guide, the um, <clears throat> all that stuff on academic dishonesty, it's on our Canvas page, it's in our uh, syllabus, and then I have it right here as well. The, <clears throat> the thing you see in blue where it says academic dishonesty policy, that's a hyperlink, which you should be able to click on that from a PDF. I think you can. It's, it's on our syllabus and um, um, Canvas page as well. So I wanted to provide an actual definition of, of how our university defines academic dishonesty. It's defined as being included, including, but not limited to cheating on exams or assignments, pretty straightforward, unauthorized collaboration. So if you got help on an assignment, it was unauthorized, like you're collaborating on assignment with someone else, and, you, and it wasn't authorized, that's, that, would, that could be an example. Plagiarism is presenting presenting work as though it's your own without giving credit to the author. So that's why it's so important to cite sources and papers and cite your sources in a public present in a speech, right? Um, you're giving credit to where credit is due, source citations. And then falsification or fabrication of university documents. I'm not too familiar with that one. And then this one is very broad, right? Any act designed to give unfair academic to give unfair academic advantage to the student, such as submitting the same assignment for two courses. But that that I, I highlighted that term, give unfair academic advantage, that can be applied, that can be interpreted in a number of ways, and that can be applied to so many different contexts. So that's why um, for this exam, and then all your work you know, in general, but for this exam, I say it's open book, open note, open internet. The only thing you can't do is cheat. So you're not permitted to get any type of assistance from any person whatsoever, right? You can use your books, you know, your notes, the internet, as long as you're not cheating. If you use the internet to get help from someone else, that's cheating, right? But if you use the internet to get information on a term or a theory or something that's in the in the net in the, in the, um, the study guide, that's something from a textbook or something that we learned in class, that's not cheating. You're just reading about that particular term. But if you're using the internet to access some sort of <clears throat> to access some sort of website or email or whatever, then that is the the way you're using the internet to give you an unfair academic advantage on this exam, that would fall under the category of academic uh, dishonesty. But yeah, that, that term is pretty broad. Um, and then they say assisting or allowing any of the above acts or the attempt to commit such acts. So it's pretty intense, right? It, and it should be, and and you should be aware of this. You should know how this works. Basically, if you're honest, if you have integrity, and you're and you're doing all your own work, and you're not you're not soliciting help from anyone else whatsoever, you got nothing to worry about. Um, you know, if you were found guilty, so there, like I said, it's good for you to review this document, the three the UPS three hundred point zero two one. You should review that document, be familiar with it. 
um, in terms of understanding the process of what would happen. Like if I suspected a student of cheating or plagiarizing or doing something like that, the the steps that would take place are, are fairly, um, they're, they're outlined fairly well in that document, but essentially it's out of my hands. Like if I, if I catch a student, if, if I, if I see that students work just as something's off about it, I, I'll look into it further. And then I would create a, essentially what would be called an academic integrity violation report. I send it off to the powers that be, you know, within the university and then they deal with it. So it's not up to me to determine which type of sanction <clears throat> is uh, applied to you. They might ask me, right? The university might say, hey, like, this is what we found. What do you think? Should we give the student an F, a zero, uh, an incomplete for the course? You know, they, they might consult me about what they think should be done. Um, or, I, and I might say, hey, I don't know. It's up to you, right? So these, these are very, really complex, nasty situations. And you definitely, uh, I would, I, I, you're definitely encouraged to avoid them at all costs. The way you avoid them, be honest, right? have integrity, don't cheat. And this is something that I've experienced in my career a handful of times, and it's certainly not fun for anybody. And it, it could look, it could be really bad for you. So here are the types of sanctions that could, that would be enforced if you were found guilty. Um, but not all, right? A warning, probation, educational sanctions. I'm not too familiar with educational sanctions. But the, the, I, I, I highlight, highlighted the ones that are a little bit more straightforward. Removal from academic program. So let's say you're a, a business major. Potentially, you could be removed from that academic program. You're a psychology major. You could be removed from that program. Um, that's one possible sanction. Suspension from the university or expulsion from the university. You might be suspended for, let's say, a semester. They might say, hey, for an entire semester, you can't be part of this campus, this university. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know exactly how these work, but these are the types of things that are coming from our university policy statements. Expulsion from the university means, hey, you're kicked out, cannot come back. Denial of admission or enrollment in university classes. So um, you just they just want to allow you to enroll in any classes, including extended education. So it's pretty serious stuff, right? Um, that's why I don't want that to happen to you. That's why I'm in informing you and educating you on the process of, that our college takes place, that, that are the, are the processes that our college uses and utilizes to handle these types of situations. I emphasize this so much because this is a, a, an exam that you take at home you're by yourself. So there's a, a, a greater um, you know, propensity for students to potentially cheat. So please don't, and you'll be fine if you don't. Okay. So that's that. Um, I have all the, the sections to study for the chapters. You got all week. I think that's about it. Um, I, I, I wish you all the best during the final exam week. For some of you, this is your very first semester uh, as a college student. And for many of you, especially for those of you who are it's the first semester, whether it's your first, second, third, or fourth semester, final exam week is pretty stressful, right? You, there's so much on your plate. You're juggling so much. You're probably not sleeping as much as you should. And you're, you're just, oh, your brain is overworked. My brain's overworked. I got a lot going on. We all do. So I encourage you all to do the best that you can. Make sure you do sleep. You know, don't don't pull an all-nighter. Some students do that. And from I've had so many students share with me their stories of pulling all-nighters and how it was absolutely awful. They did far, they performed far worse on their exams than they thought. They couldn't sleep. They felt horrible. It was just an absolute nightmare. So please don't do that. Uh, your body needs sleep. I had one, one uh, instance in my life where I pulled somewhat of an all-nighter where I was, I was up till like studying till, I don't know, four in the morning and then I slept for two hours and I woke up at six in the morning and then continued studying. And I did horrible. I did, I got, I got a D or I think a, a C minus or a D on the exam that I was studying for. And then, and then later that day I had to work and I felt absolutely awful at work and just like nauseous in my head. Um, 
I was like sweating and like, it was just my, I had an out of body experience and, and I was young. I was like 19, 20. Um, so I encourage you not to do that. Get sleep, drink plenty of water, eat healthy. Uh, don't party. Uh, you know, just hang in there for the last, the last stretch home stretch of the semester. A lot of students I have, I currently have, uh, about 160 students or so, something like that, roughly 160 students between uh, both colleges I teach at. And a lot of students are under a lot of stress and anxiety and just dealing with life and school stuff. So um, I can definitely sympathize with, with all the stuff that y'all are dealing with. So <clears throat> I wish you the best and encourage you to um, just, you know, fo stay focused and just kind of look look towards the finish line. Keep your, keep your eyes on the prize and the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, as of next today, Saturday, the 11th, and then one week from today, uh, or a little over a week from today, you know, after the weekend's over, after the 18th, 19th, or whatever, everyone has a different final day of, of when they're going to be done. And you're done. You're done for the semester. And then you have several weeks to sort of decompress, unwind, get prepared for the spring, uh, reflect, and all that good stuff. All right. Hope you're all doing well. And, um, Best wishes to you, stay focused, and do well.